Hey folks, welcome back. My name is Dominic and I'm the host of the Android Factory. In the last episode, we covered our nav host, we covered the nav controller. We're actually using Jetpack Compose Navigation here to navigate between our two screens. As you can see here in the emulator, we have uh, you know this character details screen. At the bottom, we have a view all episodes. And eventually, this is going to be a secondary screen that we kind of you know fill out with all of our character information. We'll get to that, but for the time being here, I wanted to talk about caching. As we see here, when we go backwards, we have uh, you know that little bit of a loading state. If we go ahead and relaunch the app, we obviously don't have anything. So when we try to fetch character 145, we need to make a network call here to get that information. As we go forward or navigate somewhere else in the app and then we come back to the screen, we're doing that same networking operation again. So uh, you know, we're not really saving any of the information that we could definitely save and improve some performance. And uh, it's actually not terribly difficult to go ahead and add things in uh, a caching layer. So we're just going to cover that right now. Uh, subscribe if you're brand new, smash that like button to help me out. And we're going to jump right in, take a look at our KTOR client here. And so if you haven't been following along, the KTOR client is our, um, our secondary module in this project. And we basically are wrapping our entire API in this class and, and creating a nice little interface on top of it, right? So we have our get character function takes in a particular ID returns an API operation of character and the fanciness around there is just successes and failures with the correct the correct information but we should add in that caching layer really quickly and so what is a caching layer what is the concept of it well the concept is hey we've made this network call we have information we, we, we've done the expensive operation right the thing that takes a little bit longer and we need to save that information so that if we ever need it again we don't need to be doing that you know same networking operation again I mean not only are we saving time for the user it uh, can sometimes make our lives a little bit easier because we don't need to worry about the network calls again, the network calls potentially failing again, and you know that odd case from the user's perspective of, hey, you know, what if they're not on Wi-Fi? What if they are just using data? Well, we don't need to actually use their data anymore to get stuff something we already have. So we're simply going to create a private var in here as a very simple approach, and we're going to name this the character cache. This is going to be a mutable map of integer to character. Right. And so the concept here is that after this safe API call runs, which is really just a fancy way to wrap the API call in a try catch, but basically once this line runs here and dot body remote character and then dot two domain character, right? This is a mapping function to basically bring a network model into a domain model. We can also apply something at this point. Valuable reason to use also in this case is for exactly something like this. We would just want to run like some kind of a side effect after all that other stuff has run. And we're simply just going to say character cache at our ID equals it. And it is, uh, you know, the character that gets generated after this is passed into the also block here. So now we're just going ahead and updating our character cache. So every single time that we add, uh, you know, we fetch a new character, we go ahead and stuff that information in based on their ID to this map. And the real killer here is that great, we're kind of saving that information, but we need to also use that information. So if we go ahead and say character cache at the ID, of course, that is a nullable operation. So we need to go ahead and um, wrap that in a, in a question mark dot let. And obviously, we can't just return this because we have to return the API operation of character. We only have the actual information for the character. So we can just very simply say API operation dot success and we pass it in and it'll basically look to the calling code here of the get character function, it will look like we made an API call, but it will just happen instantaneously. If we actually get a hit on our cache, we won't even run this API call. So we go ahead and rerun the app here. Nothing should change from our call site perspective, so it's safe to just rerun things. We saw that loading state here when we navigated to the, to the character detail screen for the first time. We click on view all episodes, and when we go back here, we do actually see a, a loading state, and I thought I was losing my marbles here, but realistically, I think that's because in our character details screen, yeah, we have a delay here for half a second before we actually make that network call. I'm gonna remove that. Man, I thought this whole thing was just down the drain, but okay, we could see it took a little bit longer there. We can go ahead, view all episodes, we come back and we have that information immediately available to us. So the app just feels fluid. It feels like you know we're, we're intelligently saving state and restoring state and all that kind of good stuff. And realistically, it is all because of that caching layer. 
that delay had me had me worrying about everything I knew about programming. But um, quite simply here, right, we're just going to have a map of the different data points that we want. We can always beef this out and make this a little bit nicer, uh, you know, make some fancy wrappers around it. But really, at the end of the day, all we need to do is just save the data somehow and quickly access the data. Of course, we want to use a map because we want to look things up extremely quickly. And that's about it, folks. That, that, that's really how simple it is, how clean it is. That's all I got for you. So it's going to be a little bit of a shorter one. But, uh, you know, as you can see here, especially just a primitive version of getting it working, adding and caching to your network layer is not very difficult. I think it is very helpful that we just have our singular KTOR client here. Um, we're obviously going to need to make sure that this is the same instance of the KTOR client so that our cache is uh, being remembered and all that kind of stuff. But at our main activity, we are just creating that. Obviously, we will inject that in via dependency injection in the future. But for now, we're basically just creating that class once and we're just allowing our different screens to use that same KTOR client. So our cache is actually being saved between all the different screens that use it and stuff like that. So one little technical note there. But other than that, smash that like button if you made it this far in the video. I really appreciate you. Subscribe if you're brand new and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks.